Hello everyone and welcome to our class on Twitter. Now before we begin, one thing I wanted to mention, this class is designed for anyone out there who is brand new to Twitter. Also for those of you maybe who have been using it a little bit but just need help with some of the basics. And also I did want to mention, you will find over the course of this class, I am not going to mention by name my Twitter handle. It will appear on the screen inevitably, but I'm not going to mention it by name. The reason being is I am not one of those people who's like looking to get a million followers. That's not my goal. My goal in creating this class and all of our classes is to help inform the people out there who really need this information. If you do want to follow me, I'm thrilled, I'm flattered, but that's not the goal with this class. So I hope you enjoy it. Without any further ado, here's our class on Twitter. Coming up next on PCClassesOnline.com. The first step in creating a new Twitter profile is to go to twitter.com and you'll have to fill out this little form here. Just put in your name, email address, and password. Uh, one little tip, if you have trouble creating really good passwords, you might want to check out a class that we did recently called One Password. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video for those of you who are interested in that kind of thing. Now also in the sign up process, you're going to end up creating your Twitter handle. That's just your profile name. Uh, you can see mine here on the screen, but as I mentioned, I'm not going to actually say it out loud, just my own little reasons. Anyways, once you've created that, uh, you're going to start to need to assemble the other elements of your profile. And I'm going to go to the edit button here so I can really start to display them. The first is to find a photo. So it can be a photo of you, it can be a photo of your logo if you're doing this as a business, whatever you want might even be your storefront. Then you can put your name. Again, it can be your name. It can be the name of your business, whatever's your preference. And then a short little description. Now this description can include hyperlinks. It can include hashtags. I'm going to give you uh, definitions in just a moment. And also a trick if you have a very long website address, how to shorten it. Then you're going to put your location. And if you do have it, you can also put your website address here at the very, very bottom. You can also choose a theme color, although it's not really all that important, whatever you choose. You'll also see here at the very top of your profile that you can put a header photo. Now, please, please ignore mine. I'm actually about to swap it out any day now. I just haven't had a moment to design it. Um, your header profile, for those of you who are doing this as an individual, a lot of people will do just a widescreen photo. Could be of you, could be of nature, could be where you live. For those of you who are in business, I really strongly recommend hiring a professional graphic designer. There's a bunch of different options out there, of course. One really inexpensive option, not necessarily the highest quality, but it is inexpensive, I'd like to at least mention, is there is a website out there called Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. It's a little website where you can pay people $5 to do a gig for you. I've used them occasionally uh, for things like this, so you might want to check them out. When you go to their website, just search for the word Twitter. You'll find a million people who are willing to design your Twitter header. Now, once you've created your actual profile, let's start talking about uh, the actual uses for Twitter. Now, earlier when I taught this class, I kind of asked everyone, for those of the people out there who didn't use Twitter, why didn't they? And the big, uh, the number one reason I received from people was that they just didn't really see the purpose of it. And my argument has always been you have to craft your purpose. And then you have to make what you put out there and who you follow match that purpose. So the top uses for Twitter are number one, news. And it can be news on a local, national, or international scale. Whatever it is that interests you, that's what you should go for. One of the best examples I loved uh, during our live class was a gentleman who said he has a kid uh, who you know attends school and he wants to find out when school's closed, whether due to weather or whatever reason it may be. So the school will tweet out if school is closed. It's certainly a lot easier than having to watch the news and watch that little ticker go across the bottom of the screen. By the way, for those of you out there who are parents and are interested in doing that, I will give you an extra little trick about that in a little bit. Second reason, comic relief. Uh, over the course of this, you are going to end up seeing who I follow. And uh, one of the things you may pick up on is, yeah, I follow quite a few comedians. I love Jimmy Fallon, love Chris Hardwick, people like that, Dana Gould, um, and people who just make me laugh. I like to fill my life with laughter, with people who are kind of you know just happy, positive people. Um, so I tend to follow a good amount of comedians. So for that little joke here and there, that's one of the reasons why I do it. 
Next is for trending topics. This is useful for some people in business, depending on what it is you do. On a lot of the different screens that you'll see on Twitter, for example, even if I just go to the home page, you'll see here at the top left corner, there are trending topics, okay? A lot of these trending topics are either there because of news stories that are taking place uh, or have taken place. Um, also, celebrities, they'll tweet out different hashtags, topics, and that will trigger a trending topic. So it's a good way to stay informed of what's going on, both in real news and in pop culture, that kind of thing too. The next is for sales leads as well as customer leads. Uh, using Twitter for business is definitely something that has grown over the years, and one of the best ways to do that is to use Twitter ads. I think we're going to probably end up doing a separate class on Twitter for business, but you can use that. If you're a business, a small business, um, I would like to give you right now one of the greatest little simple, simple tricks for businesses, and this is really for people who, those of you who have a brick and mortar store, okay? So you have a place where people come into. Everyone knows it's a good idea to put a poster up and say, hey, tweet us on, you know, to follow us on Twitter. But you have to give them a motivation, and sometimes you also have to give them an easier way to do it. I'm going to give you a special little hyperlink in the description of this video to something I think is pretty cool. It's a special kind of sticker that can go in any business, and the sticker has embedded within it an NFC chip. What that means is for people who have a smartphone, especially a lot of the newer smartphones, they can actually hold their phone right up to the sticker, and that will automatically make them like you on Twitter. Same thing applies, by the way, to Facebook. So I'll have links to both of those in the description of the video. That's just one of the little tricks I wanted to give you today. I was going to give it at the very end of the class, but... Hey, you made it this far. I might as well reward you right off the bat. So that's uh, one little reason. Business. Keep engaged with your customers. Another trick I would like to give you is that the key to a successful tweet is one that is engaging. Think dialogue, not monologue. Not to say that it's not occasionally okay, but if you're trying to do this, again, for business, you want to engage with your followers. Next thing uh, is for local news, okay? Sometimes there's going to be, you know, what do we do tonight? Where do we go out for dinner? Well, actually, if you look right here, this is a little local uh, market where I live. You know, they're tweeting out their specials, okay? The one little thing I would say these guys could have probably done better, it's a great idea to include a photo because photos, let's face it, photos make it pop. Uh, next reason is customer service. There's a million stories out there on Twitter about people who use Twitter for customer service purposes. My piece of advice to you is be appropriate, especially if you're the one who's maybe not the happiest customer. Uh, an example I'll give you uh, is my colleague, Mark Collier, who does all of our website design. He's about to teach a ton of classes on WordPress with PC Classes Online. Uh, Mark was tweeting one day about uh, this app called Flipboard and their, at the time, competitor. And he was talking about why he liked the competitor better than Flipboard. Well, the Flipboard CEO saw that tweet and started private messaging with Mark, asking him what they could do better to make him kind of start using their service. So Mark's a smart guy. He gave them a bunch of advice. A couple weeks go by they actually took it to heart. They included those suggestions and updated Flipboard. So now I can say that my employee is actually part of the success of Flipboard in some strange way. So that's an example. Also, a great example of using Twitter for customer service is when you're having airline trouble. I myself was stranded in Houston, Texas recently, started tweeting with JetBlue. Within two minutes, they responded to me. They can make it a lot easier. And um, just to give you another little tip, if you're on a flight and you're landing and your connection is really, really tight, if you tweet the airline, they will sometimes hold the flight if they know that you're maybe just running five or ten minutes late. Really good piece of advice. I recommend using that one. Uh, next thing is for sale specials. Kind of already mentioned it all. Uh, I didn't mean to, but if you are a business, you have a special. Uh, the example I like to give is if you're a bakery, okay? If you have a bunch of product that's about to go bad, let's get rid of it so that we don't have to, you know, just throw it out. They'll send a tweet out to their followers, say, hey, come in the next half an hour and get 40% off all of this product. And it's a great way to easily advertise that special. And it's not like it costs you anything to do that. Now, let's go over some definitions. Now, some of these, I, apologies, I, my, I apologize, are really, really basic. 
a tweet. A tweet is a message. It's a public message that you put out there to the world. You can do it by going to the home screen of Twitter. You have 140 characters to compose this message. Included in that, you can have hyperlinks. Again, I will give you a trick to shorten them in a little bit. Photos, that will also shorten the number of available characters. Uh, and hashtags, which brings me to the next definition, hashtags. Uh, an example of a hashtag uh, might be, you know, today, uh, later on this evening, is the Oscars, okay? So I could say, you know, rooting for, you know, Bradley Lee Cooper, I hope I'm spelling his name right, uh, for tonight's, and then hashtag Oscars. And you'll see, as soon as I started typing that, it gave me suggestions. In this case, it's the year 2015, people. Oscars 2015. So what it means is that if someone were to either click on Oscars 2015 or if they search for it, my tweet will appear among the responses. Uh, and a great example of how that is becoming more and more popular, there's different talk shows like At Midnight, uh, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, where they will put a quick hashtag out like worst Christmas present ever. And it's a challenge, you know, the viewers have 140 characters minus the hashtag, to come up with a funny, you know, worst Christmas present story. And if it's funny enough, they might even get on national television. So it's a way for those shows to interact with the fans. And they are able to organize those thoughts by using hashtags. So typically the hashtag is going to be the subject of whatever you're writing about. You know, in my case, I do tend to focus on a lot of the Apple products. So mine may be, you know, hey, the hashtag Apple Watch is coming out soon. Something like that that just groups it together. Hashtags ultimately will also help you gain followers. Because if someone is looking for who is the, you know, expert when it comes to Apple products, I want them to be able to search for Apple and have my name pop up as an example. Next definition we're going to go over is a DM, also known as a direct message. So the difference between a direct message and a tweet is that a tweet is going to be public for everyone to see. A direct message is just between two people. I like to read the official definition of direct message because uh, it just seems to be well written enough that you can understand it. So here we go. You can only send a direct message to users who follow you. And you can only receive messages from users that you follow. I hope that made sense. So uh, it's basically just that one-on-one -on -one conversation. You can't send a direct message to just anyone. Um, so uh, that's uh, the next definition. Uh, let's see here. Next we have retweet. Okay, retweet, very similar on Facebook to uh, sharing someone else's status or sharing someone else's post. So for example, if I really, uh, if this looks really good to me, you'll see here this little symbol right here. And when I hover my cursor over it, one of the options is retweet. It just means that when I click that, it's going to go out as if it were me. Okay, but I'm putting out the same information. There is another option, but you don't have access to it from the Twitter website, something I found very strange. Let me screen over here for a moment to the Twitter app for Mac. So you'll see in this case, if I click on that same icon, there's a second option called quote retweet. Quote retweet means that I can add my own whatever to it. So I can say, you know, check out this great special, something like that. Um, there you go with that. Next definition is favorite. Favorite, very similar to a thumbs up uh, in YouTube, a like on Facebook. It's just basically you saying, good job, like the content. And so you can click right here. You can see there's a little star on every post. Click that to favorite the post. A lot of times if someone sends me, you know, a message saying, you know, good work for what we're doing, you know, I'll favorite. I, I think it's a, you know, simple way of just acknowledging that I've seen it and I appreciate their kind words. The next definition I want to go over is the usage of the at symbol. So when you're composing a tweet, sometimes you want to bring it towards someone's attention. Like let's say I'm tweeting about what else, Apple, and I say, can't wait for details on the upcoming hashtag Apple car, which they've rumored to be uh, releasing in 2020. And I want to bring it to Tim Cook's attention. Okay, well, Tim doesn't know me. He probably will never ever see this, but you never know. So what I would do is I would at this point add the at symbol. And because I already follow Tim, it's going to come up right away. But when I hit T-I-M, you can see he's the third option there. 
So when you add the at symbol and start to put in someone's name, it just basically means that they're going to be notified of it up here where it says notifications. Uh, in the case of a celebrity, the odds of them actually seeing it are fairly slim, but I'm actually friends with a couple celebrities and some of them do actually read quite a few of those comments and even though they don't respond to a lot of them, they do actually see them. So that's one way to tag someone in a post. That is the way to tag someone in a post. Uh, next thing we're going to start to do, talk about is navigation of Twitter. Now, right now, I'm showing you it from the Twitter website. A lot of people, when they use Twitter, they'll use the various apps. I myself, uh, I actually really enjoy the basic Twitter app for iPhone. Um, I don't use anything really special. I started kind of experimenting a little bit with a new one called Twitterific. Um, haven't really formed much of an opinion about it yet just because I haven't used it a lot. Um, but the navigation of the website is pretty darn simple. So obviously up here at the top left we have the home page and that gets you to your main Twitter feed. Next we have notifications and this includes things like people who have favorited your tweets, people who have tagged you in messages, people who have favorited, I'm sorry, people who have followed you recently, uh, etc. So you'll find out those little notifications, sort of like the globe icon on Facebook. Next, we have messages. These are just private direct messages that I've received from people. I forgot to clear this one, apparently. It's someone who was asking me about iOS 8 and if it would slow down his phone. I said, nope, shouldn't slow it down. At least it didn't for me. So that's where you go for your private messages. Uh, recently, they also introduced, now you can do group private messaging. That's a new feature that just came out recently. And then we have the Discover button up here. And this is kind of where you can go to find out what's trending, find out who maybe you should follow, okay? And you'll find all of those categories up here. So I can go to, for example, popular accounts. It'll show me people who are popular in music, you know, kind of all the regulars you'd expect. Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Rihanna, all those people there. Sports figures, people who are big in photography, etc. There's a whole bunch of different categories, as you can see right here. Um, Finding friends. This part, I have to just be totally honest with you, is really disappointing for me. There is no way, for those of you who use Facebook, there is no way to simply import your friends from Facebook to Twitter. That is to say, tell Twitter who of my, who of my friends who are already on Facebook are also on Twitter. Other services do that. They don't. Um, the way that you can get around it uh, is by using either Gmail or Yahoo. Both of those services have a method so that you can import into them your contacts from Facebook. And then once you've done that, you can import your Yahoo contacts to Twitter. It's really roundabout. It's it's not fun by any means. Who knows? Maybe we'll do a class on it. I just I it's anything but intuitive. Uh, who to follow, okay? It just kind of looks at who you're already following uh, and it just kind of makes suggestions for who you might want to follow. Like I said, I tend to follow comedians, entrepreneurs, leaders, uh, people in technology, that kind of thing. That's why it's throwing out those suggestions right there. And also you have access to activities. So this is, for example, people who I follow, you know, what they're doing. You know, so we already mentioned Chris Hardwick. He favorited someone else's tweet, okay? Whatever that may be. Uh, next, I want to go over some of the settings. These are really important. I'm going to have to blur out part of the screen. I apologize just for my own privacy reasons. But if you go here to the very top right corner of Twitter, you click on your profile photo, you go here into settings. Okay. Now, the main thing I want to talk about right here is security and privacy. And again, sorry, I have to blur out part of the screen because I don't want all of my information out there. So here are the different things that I kind of recommend to people. First one, under privacy, okay, this bottom section here, photo tagging. This can help prevent a PR nightmare. My recommendation is to do either the middle option, eh, probably, yeah, the middle option. Only allow people that you follow to tag you in photos, okay? You don't want one of those celebrity oopsie moments to happen to you. Uh, also, if I scroll down here, you'll see a few others. Uh, tweet location. This is important for your own privacy reasons. Um, my recommendation is to uncheck this option. By default, this is checked. And what that means is that when you send out a tweet, it's going to actually put your location. Where that's important is if you're not at home, if someone, God forbid, was going to burglarize you, they know you're not home. So my advice is to uncheck this option and also delete all previous location information. I want to give you another 
reference here at this point. It goes slightly off topic, so I'll be quick. For those of you who have concerns about your privacy, I have a blog post that I put together recently all about privacy and what tools I recommend for the average person. It's pretty easy to follow. There will be a link in the description of the video. I hope you'll check it out. Next here, if you go down to personalization, this option by default is checked. My advice is to uncheck it. Same goes for promoted content. Okay, It just means that basically when you see ads, I don't want them to be tracking what websites I go to to form to tailor what ads I see. Okay, and then uh, that's about it. What I would like to do at this point, folks, is I would like to go through just a bunch of little tips and tricks. I want to try to keep this video as compact as possible. So here in no particular order are just a bunch of tips and tricks. First thing I would like to mention is the general composition of a tweet. Um, and specifically one thing to probably steer away from. You want to basically when you're creating a tweet, you want to start with content. So put in whatever words you want at the beginning. At that point, you can put in a hashtag here and there, maybe put in a hyperlink, put in an afterthought, and at the end of the tweet, if you're going to tag anyone, tag them at the end. Here's the reason why to do that. Um, so if I start, let's say I start uh, tweeting about an app that we recently reviewed uh, called Next Glass. Okay, if I put their name at the very, very beginning, the only people who will end up seeing this tweet are myself them and people who follow both of us. That's the reason why you typically never start a tweet with someone's profile name. So steer away from that. The next trick I would like to give you is for when you want to share a hyperlink. After all, when you go to a lot of different products or a YouTube video, the link is pretty long. You need to shorten it. There's a, tons of different services out there. Here's just simply who I use. I found them to be very friendly, very easy to use, and free. So I use a service called Bitly. You can create an account if you want or not. Um, and the way it works is when you have a link you want to shorten, you just copy and paste it right here and they will give you a much shortened hyperlink that you can then copy and paste back into Twitter. So there's one that I created just a moment ago. So they click that little link and that goes to a much longer website URL. If you do decide to create a account with Bitly, one of the other nice things you gain access to is analytics. So you can see exactly how many people engaged with that link, how many people clicked on it. Uh, especially great for businesses, of course. The next trick I would like to give you is it's always a great idea to add an image to your tweets. And there's different ways you can do this. Of course, you can have a phone or an iPad, whatever it may be, and shoot a photo yourself. But sometimes you just need a quick little graphic. Now, I am not a lawyer. I am not giving you legal advice today. But one of the things that you can do for getting images is to go to simply images.google.com. When you go to that, you are searching Google just for images, nothing more. So if I need a quick image of a cupcake, boom, I got my cupcake image that I can throw into my tweet. For those of you out there who want to take this to a little bit of a further level, uh, I would like to just give a shout out to an app that I love. I use it all the time. For those of you who are on Apple products, there's this great piece of software called Pixelmator. It won app of the year a couple years back. It's pretty easy to use. It's very similar to Photoshop Elements. In my own opinion, I just find it to be slightly friendlier than Photoshop Elements. We have classes on it. I'll put links to the class and the product in the description of the video. The next piece of advice I would like to give you, you can actually see here that I take to heart myself. When someone follows you, it can be very tempting to show your thanks by following them back. A lot of people tend to regret doing that. If you look at mine here, you'll see I only follow a little bit over 100 people. If you start to follow back every single person who follows you, I feel that you may discover that that Twitter experience is a little bit tarnished because now you're not just seeing the people you care about. Really try to focus on that. Just follow the people who you actually care what they have to say. And that's not by any means that is not me telling you to follow me. I only want people to follow me who have an interest in what I'm talking about. So whatever your passion is, you should go after following people who share that passion. The next trick I would like to give you is something I made reference to in the very beginning, how to get mobile alerts for Twitter. Uh, the best example I can think of is if you are a parent, if you have a kid in school, if school's canceled, you want to know about it. 
here's how you do it. First thing you have to do is you have to tweak your settings. So go back to settings by clicking on your little profile image and go into settings. From here, you're going to click on the second, I'm sorry, the mobile option, which is about midway down. And we're going to scroll down just a little bit here. Forgive me, I'm going to have to blur out part of the screen here. And you'll see here that the text notifications, I recommend checking this option right here. Okay, so you can get text message alerts on your phone for really anything with Twitter. Uh, the problem is you don't want to get too many because obviously messaging rates apply and you don't want to be spammed to death either. For those of you who uh, do have, you know, you do have kids in school, my recommendation is talk to the school and ask them if they have a dedicated Twitter account just for school cancellations, delays, and major announcements like that. Once they do have that, check this option. So then when you give Twitter your phone number, they will send you a text message alert only when this account tweets out. And I need to show you how to now set that up. Uh, so I don't have kids, so I'm going to show you a different example here. I'm going to use these guys right here, the Awesomer, for those of you who are tech gadget freaks. Um, this, this is one of the best blogs on the internet, in my own opinion. You click on their profile, so it pops up like this. See that little gear icon? One of the options is turn on mobile notifications. So if I were to do this, anytime they tweet, it goes right to my cell phone. I get that push message alert. You may have also noticed that on the previous screen, there's also a way to make the account silence itself if it's between certain hours. Obviously, you don't want to get a text message if it's 3 in the morning, but, you know, if it's 1 in the afternoon and they're going to have to let out school early, you know, you're going to want to know about that. For those of you who are in business, I would like to give you a couple quick pieces of advice. Uh, first is that you can track your analytics on Twitter by simply going to the website analytics.twitter.com. And this will just show you basically how you did. How many impressions did you make? How many engagements did you make? And your engagement rate as a percentage. Now, I uh, have, I believe, already mentioned it earlier in this class. Maybe I didn't. Um, I am not a Twitter freak. I, I just kind of tweet because I like sharing fun information. Uh, I'm not Kim Kardashian. I'm not Kanye West. Um, I'm not going after a million followers. So you can see my numbers here are pretty pathetic. But uh, compared to other celebrities out there, other businesses who do this a lot more than I do, you know, you obviously want to try to hit as high a number as possible. The impression number, not quite so important. The engagement number is, and especially, of course, as a percentage. This is just good information for letting you know what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and what you can do better. So use that information to your advantage. The other thing you can do is you can take out an ad on Twitter. Similar, you just go to ads.twitter.com. It works similarly to the way that Facebook does. That's what's really nice, though, about Twitter is the ability to really target location information. Let me give you an example. My favorite business plan for working with Twitter are food trucks. Food trucks that are, for example, in New York City, they're constantly moving from neighborhood to neighborhood. They can create a targeted ad that hits a very specific geographic area saying, hey guys, come get your you know, gourmet taco at, when we're at this corner and this corner. And it's a great way to get the information out for a fairly inexpensive cost. So if you want to create a Twitter ad, I think we're going to probably do a devoted video to creating Twitter ads uh, in the near future, but uh, we're not going to really go over it much today. Well, folks, that does it for me for today. I wish you very happy tweeting. This is David A. Cox with PCClassesOnline.com. If you enjoyed this class, leave us a comment below. If you're watching us on YouTube, of course, we really do appreciate it if you click that little like button. And be sure to check out our website at PCClassesOnline.com. That's all for me, everyone. Class dismissed.